The other thing the Affordable Care Act has done is it's defined a full-time employee as one that's worked 30 hours a week. So the employers that have 50 or 100 uh, employees, I say 50 or 100 because there's different rules for both sizes of employers. But if, 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 if you have 50 full-time employees, that means 50 employees that work 30 hours or more a week. That's why one of the reactions to all this has been uh, just all across the country, employers redefining what part-time is uh, uh, to less than 30 hours a week and keeping people from going over 30, which is another dichotomy that's created this. I had a friend that was at Applebee's, and this was eight months ago, long before a bunch of this, but a, a waitress was waiting on their table, and then a waiter came, and then he said, where did my waitress go? And he said, well, she was almost at 30 hours, so she was sent home. So, you know, it's going all that. That's how that works, okay? Um, we're going to talk about community ratings, because what I'm trying to do is get uh, some broad brush uh, concepts to you here so that you know a little bit about how it works. Um, the law requires employers with the equivalent of 50 or more full-time workers to offer this health insurance to their employees. That's one of the ways they're wanting to get insurance in the hands of people that need insurance. Is still employer provided, right? The other way is through uh, exchanges and the individual mandate, and the other is Medicaid. There are several different penalties and taxes that employers have to pay if they don't. For small businesses, it doesn't matter if the employer is less than 50 employees. Uh, the, the delay of the employer mandate has no impact on the individual mandate. Currently, the individual mandate, everybody has to have health insurance as, as of 2014, is law. And they're not postponing that. Okay? Are people large or small employers? I'm going to zoom through some of this because uh, this is what employers are wanting to know is whether or not they're above or below 50. And there's all kinds of rules as far as how to count. Uh, how many employees you have and whether or not you're above or below 50. There's arguments, oh, all kinds of arguments, whether or not teachers were full or part-time. Do you count them for a year-long hourly average per week, right? Or just during the time that they're, well, the government had to come and say all teachers are full-time employees. So school corporations do have to provide uh, health insurance. Um, So uh, full-time employees above 30 hours count. See, part-time employees count as far as employers that have to provide insurance. So if you have, let me give you an example. If you have ABC company, 10 salaried staff, 25 hourly employees that work over 40 hours a week, and then 25 part-time employees averaging 20 hours per week, how many and 10 seasonal. How many employees do they have? Do they have to comply with the rules? Well, they got 10 salaried employees. That's 10. You know, the question is, are we above 50 or below 50, right? So they, are, they got 10, right? They also have 25 more, so they got 35 full-time employees above, four, above 30 hours. 25 part-time employees working 20 hours a week. Those hours are added up and divided by a divisor to get full-time equivalents, okay? So this particular company, 2,100 hours worked by their uh, part-timers, that is an equivalent of 17 full-time employees. So this employ employer has 52 full-time employees or full-time equivalents. So they're above 50. They have to provide health insurance to all of their full-time employees, none of their part-timers. All right. So the part-timers are... Account. And it is a huge, uh, I, you know, you'd have to offer me a continental breakfast if we started talking about all the rules on the employers, okay? Because that's where it would take us. Um, I've worked with franchisees, people with restaurants, to figure out a way to separate restaurant store number one, 
from restaurant store number two and restaurant store number three because the government adds all of those restaurants up if the, uh, uh, all the uh, uh, three restaurants are owned by similar people like mom and dad and Uncle Bob and Cousin Joe and, and partner one and partner two. Well, there's a way to separate those out, but it's very difficult. But I have been successful at that to where it, each one is a separate employer and under 50. See what I'm doing there? Okay. Um, these are the uh, penalties for employers. Uh, they either pay $2,000 penalty per employer, employee per year if they don't offer coverage uh, or $3,000 penalty f uh, per employer per year if they don't meet certain tests of the kind of insurance that they're offering. Okay, it, uh, it, it's a huge amount of rules for employers uh, to follow. It has to, uh, the, the insurance that employers have to provide have to be affordable and has to be offered to substantially all the employees and have to provide essential minimum benefits. These essential minimum benefits, which are all new, is one of the reasons why costs are going up. Um, so it has to be affordable. So this is an example, uh, if, if a, an employee's uh, premium is $500, the employer pays 66% of that, the employee pays 34% of that, uh, and that employee is making $9 per hour, under the rules, the max you can charge that employee is $129.68. If you're charging that employee $170, that's too much, and you violate the rules, and you're, you'll be subject to the penalty. And, and I, I, I won't go through all the examples because it just gets very uh, uh, frustrating figuring out all the rules. Let's zoom on to the, um, uh, I think, the health insurance exchanges. What, these, see these charts? These are charts for employers to figure out how their variable hour employees count. You know, not everybody works solid straight hour, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, right? You just, a lot of employers have variable hour employees. How do you add them up? There's all sorts of rules. Community rating. What has health insurance always been based on? How much you pay for health insurance is based upon usually what? Like your age, what's your health history been? Right, good or bad? People with a bad health history, uh, let's say an employee, employer with 20 employees and they're pretty unhealthy, what's their rates going to be? They're going to be higher than the employer across the street. They're a little younger and a little healthier, right? Their insurance is cheaper, right? None of that's the same anymore. All the insurance costs are based upon community ratings, okay? Um, and what that is is that we have a region here in Indiana um, Here's our region, Posey, uh, Vandenberg, Gibson, and Warwick counties is a region. And they've lumped, everybody that lives in this area now has a community rating as far as how healthy we are. Okay? Okay? So Posey County has the short end of the stick there because you're lumped into Vandenberg County and averaged out as far as how healthy you are. We're not... We're not too bad because Marion County is, of course, the worst. And see how they've added some rural counties to Marion County? That's to lower the rates a little bit. But uh, these counties are kind of screwed, too, I guess you could actually say. But that's how the community ratings. Oh, I used to know that. Uh, but it's, it's some of these farming regions up through here, right? Are they healthier? OK, you see this map? Everything in the tan are the states that decided that they uh, were not going to have their own health insurance exchange. The ones in the blue are, uh, are ones that decide we will have our own health insurance exchange. So like Kentucky has its own health insurance exchange. They're in charge of all of it. Indiana's is the Health and Human Services website. So it's basically administered by the Health and Human Services, the federal government. Uh, the ones in light blue are ones that are kind of a combination of the two. 
But each state was uh, uh, had the option of deciding whether or not they were going to do theirs or not. And if you didn't going to aren't going to do yours, then the federal government has put up their health insurance exchange for Indiana uh, residents. And it's it, it, you, some of you've already been on it, right? And uh, it's been described as it's supposed to be like TurboTax, but I don't think that's really, is that the experience you've, the different plans that are offered on the health insurance exchange are based upon how much uh, uh, coverages it's actually providing, uh, platinum, um, uh, how much cost that their plans are meant to provide for of actual costs. That's why you have the different categories. Um, there's your bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Here are the co companies that are on the Indiana Exchange. Um, but see, the thing about that is uh, some of them only offer exchanges like up in uh, northwest Indiana or somewhere else and not here. So I think really it's uh, Anthem that provides most of our policies that we're, we'd be hooked into. No, no, if you got insurance through the exchange, you have insurance. and. Uh, but uh, similar rules would apply to your old insurance as far as if, if you're up in Chicago and you get hurt and you go to hospital, if it's out of plan, it might cost a lot more than if it is in plan, right? Or it, you have emergency uh, coverage and you don't have emergency coverage and that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, because that community rating is going to be reviewed and modified all the time, right? Uh, and you know, you, the, I, my understanding is that you go on to the uh, exchanges and you, uh, you're, uh, let's take out a navigator's help at all. You're, you're just on the website. You're supposed to be able to just put in a certain amount of information, your, your, your name, age, where you live, which gets your community rating slotted in there, and if you smoke. Right? Right? If you smoke. Maybe, maybe next year they'll ask if you own a gun. Maybe. Uh, you never know. But um, so it's all a, a moving target. The navigators, what navigators are, and, you know, they cannot advise you what kind of plan is best for you. They're just giving you information. That's why if you go to a health insurance expert, somebody like Old National Insurance or whatever, they'll sit down and see, these are the plans that are available to you, and these are the best ones for you because these provide better coverage for you, better bang for your buck. But navigators aren't supposed to be able to counsel you as far as which one you should get.